We've got Catherine Benzor in from the zoo or the biopark. All of it. All yeah. of it. <laughs> um, Catherine is curator of education, and we're going to talk about today is becoming a volunteer at the zoo. A lot of people want to do that. Right. Yeah, a volunteer all over the biopark. And and so you're going to have a session this Thursday that or, uh, is an orientation for people that want to do this. Right, because we get so many calls. People want to help out. They love animals or they yeah. love fish. They love plants. And so on Thursday, we have an hour-long session where we teach them about all the different jobs that you can do as a biopark education volunteer. And um, you get to hear uh, from the docents, from the touch pool volunteers, from the horticulture volunteer. And so it's, it's just a really great uh, time to come if you're not quite sure what it is you want to do, but you have that passion, that love of nature, that love of the biopark. Um, so that's when we invite people to come on down. Fantastic. Now, is this for all ages, or how old do you have to be to yeah, be a part of this? That's a great question. So, typically, it's 18 and older. Okay. We we have a summer session for teen volunteers, oh, okay. and that just ended last Friday. Um, so, we we ask for 18 and older. However, our touch pullers and our holder culture uh, can be 16. You just have to work oh, okay. with an adult. So, it's really neat because we get some parent uh, uh, child uh, mm -hmm. pairs that come in. Now, you guys love having the volunteers. We do. Uh, I mean, they really fulfill a special role for the zoo down there because the staff can't manage all of it. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So we have, there's probably close to 80 programs that we do a year, and that's from the shark discovery day that we just had at the aquarium. We have our, our fishing instructions down at Tingley Beach, um, orangutan care day at the zoo, Aww. and our volunteers are essential in teaching the visitors in uh, doing the activities with them, doing those hands-on, you know, those biofacts that we have so that people can have that tactile experience so that they can learn all about the animals, all about the plants, all about the ecosystems, and yeah. that's really essential. So we teach them everything they need to know, and we teach them how to interpret the exhibits that we have, and they carry that message of conversation to the, or conservation to the, uh, what is it, 1.24 million visitors that we get a year. Wow. Yeah. So if we want to be volunteers, how, well, first tell us the volunteer training is Thursday. How long is yes. the training? It's an hour and oh, it's at 11 a.m. No, it's not. Yeah, right. So it's, it's not really the training. It's more of the orientation. Okay. Uh, some of the training sessions are three hours long and we offer them throughout the year and that's touch, pull and horticulture. Um, our greeters, our biopark greeters, so you're the, the first contact for our visitors when mm -hmm. they enter the biopark to set up that great experience that they're going to have. Our docent training, which is our volunteer educators, those are the people that you see um, that are actually doing, they're out there in front of the exhibits, they're, they're teaching our visitors about the animals, about the plants. That's a 12 week long session oh, wow. for the fall. Yeah. And so we meet once a week, all day long, but it's great because you get to hear from uh, our curators, you get to hear from our horticulturalists, our aquarists, so it really is, it's a great education. Yeah, and it, it could be fun for yourself too, a learning experience, mm -hmm, because we exactly. were just talking a minute ago about, I was saying, well, flamingos would be a horrible place to work around because <laughs> they smell, but in fact, that's a good thing. <laughs> in fact, that's a good thing for the zoo. Right. And maybe you can kind of tell little people about why, because a lot of people they don't know the story about flamingos. Right. So. Well, it's just it's so it's it's just the 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 way that they're living, um, the pools that they're living in, and it's it's a, a sign that they are actually healthy, right? Yeah. So it's this good odor that they're healthy. And then as you're walking past the flamingos, you might get another knock of a, a very interesting <laughs> scent, um, and that's usually our our silverback gorilla. Oh. Um, yeah. When he's when he's out there and there's females out there and he's you know letting them know that he's there. This is the the odor that he gives off. So oh. when you're at the oh, zoo. You know, you're thinking, gosh, it really does smell like a zoo. Well, that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's a reason for that. Uh -huh. We're going to run through some pictures of various volunteers doing things. The question I have for you, Catherine, uh -huh. is uh, can you choose your own schedule? Can you volunteer once a week or can you that's do it a, every day? Yeah, or? that's a great question. At the biopark, you sort of have a unique situation where you don't have to have a set schedule. If you want to come down and talk about the porcupine, if you want to come down and walk the llamas, we have these groups of volunteers and it's, it's really nice and social and mm -hmm. you go with your other people and you walk the llamas and you talk to visitors about the llamas and the alpacas. So you can, you create your own schedule. Wow. So it's very flexible. It's like very that. flexible. Really now, Erin uh, has volunteered to work with the polar bears. <laughs> yes, she has tried. <laughs> but you yeah. can't get in there with them. No. It's a little dangerous. 
But no. you can't yeah, talk are, about them. You right? can talk about them exactly. So we have, um, you know, you can you can feel um, polar bear skins and pelts and things like that. So we use those as educational pieces mm -hmm. because while people can't get into the exhibit with yeah. the polar bears, <laughs> it's still amazing because we have polar bears in Albuquerque. You exactly. know, and so it's I mean, a great it's so teaching cool. tool because there is those issues, those conservation issues that we are really trying to get across to our visitors. Yeah.